More reaction now after Chris Bowen led the government's ramped up attack on the opposition's nuclear plan at the National Press Club today. Joining us live is Dr Adrian Patterson, an engineer and scientist who formerly headed up the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organisation, or ANSTO. Good to see you. Thank you so much for your time. Chris Bowen today labelled the coalition's plan as uncosted, undeliverable. He also argued it's incompatible with renewables. The costings to one side, we obviously don't have the detail on that yet. What do you think about the undeliverable and incompatible aspect of that? Can nuclear and renewables go hand in hand, do you think? Uh, it works very well in France. It works very well in a number of um, states in the United States. In fact, up to about 40% renewables, which is more or less where, you, where we are, nuclear works extremely well. That modelling has been done for Australia by... Um, uh, by experts in the field of the electricity grid, and we know that it can work. By the way, on the costs, we do know. Uh, it is cheaper to have electricity at the metre from nuclear uh, than it is uh, from any other low-carbon reliable source. And this is this data is available at electricitymap.org. It's well known. What happens is that the government talks about the levelised cost of electricity or the gen cost report, which is the cost of the fence of the facility. Actually, what people care about is the costs in their pocket. And every country that has introduced nuclear power has lowered its cost of electricity to consumers. For example, Italy, which uh, stopped its nuclear program about 45 years ago, <coughs> two, day, two days ago, said that they're going to uh, build nuclear power. So we would be one of 40 countries, uh, with the exception of Germany and with the exception of Spain, uh, which are currently using nuclear power or going back to nuclear power or have nuclear power in the top economies of the world. Adrian, when Chris Bond says this plan is undeliverable, what do you make of the sites chosen? Obviously, the coalition has a way to go in terms of yeah. community consultation and getting into the nuts and bolts of that. But do the sites that have been nominated make sense to you? I've, I've seen the plan. I, I think the sites make sense, but the biggest problem is, is not consultation, but it's the ban. Nobody is going to come and talk to us. And I've spoken to all of the major vendors, all of the people who sell nuclear plants around the world, and they won't even come to Australia anymore. They've all been here in the last five years. They've all been told that there is no intention of Labor to lift the ban. They won't even bother to come here and talk about it again because we've got a toxic ban and we've got no capacity to overcome the ban. Uh, and until the uh, Labor Party uh, decides to work with the other people who are involved, I'm apolitical, um, it would be really, really impossible to get the vendors to come to Australia and give us a reasonable discussion. Uh, we're way behind. Uh, you have to do this in a partnership between government, uh, between industry, between consumers, uh, and the vendors of these plants. And we simply don't have that platform because of the toxic approach of Chris Bone. Well, there certainly doesn't seem to be any appetite, as you point out, for Labor to, to overturn that ban. I also wanted to ask you, just how thirsty is nuclear power generation? We've heard warnings this week that crucial water resources needed for agriculture around some of the sites that have been nominated could be at risk in many of those locations. What do you think? How much water would be needed? So basically the cooling water that is used in nuclear power plants is once through stuff. It goes into the plant, it is unaffected by the radiation and it flows out of the plant. So it's run at river and it doesn't, it doesn't use water. So that again is a, is a story that is told by labor, which is not true. There are, <clears throat> There is the ability in dry, very dry areas to use dry cooling. You have a little bit of a penalty on the power, but there are dry cooled plants around the world. And so uh, it's just a complete ignorance on the part of, of Bowen and the people in his department uh, who have, and, and frankly, AEMO, who also knows nothing about nuclear power, who have created this idea that is difficult, complex, um, why are 40 countries around the world building plants? The United Arab Emirates built plants, the first one in seven years, and the second one in five years, having started with a gold standard regulation package agreed by all the top nuclear countries in the world. It takes less than 10 years to bring a nuclear power program to the grid if you intend to do it 
and you take the obstacles out of the way. Well, as I said, there still have plenty of obstacles there on the coalition's plan at this point. And as you pointed out, the ban being a big one for the coalition as they pursue this policy. Dr. Peterson, Patterson, really appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. Great to hear your insights. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much.